in Democracy 20, moving forward to a new era of tertiary education in South Africa. We have got some people that have really risen to the occasion. They've accepted the, uh, the, 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 the fact of coming to be the pioneers of the new university. Celebrating universal access to higher education. With the Higher Education Act, we wanted to come up with one policy that would see to it that there is overrunning of the education, uh, higher education system. And on this day 15 years ago, thousands of supporters converged on Church Square in Pretoria where a false start constitution was announced. Well, good evening and hello. Welcome to yet another edition of Democracy 20. In the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be celebrating the benefits 20 years of democracy have brought to all South Africans. Now, since the dawn of our democracy, the face of higher education in South Africa has drastically changed. Students from poorer backgrounds now have access to a tertiary education. The policy on higher education has brought about a total transformation at institutions across the country. The University of the Free State originally opened its doors of learning as a school in 1859 as Gray College School. In 1904, it enrolled the first matriculants for a university degree. Shortly thereafter, the college and school were separated. By the early 90s, only 2% of the students registered at this tertiary institution were black and colored. The remaining 98% were white. The apartheid policy had effectively enforced student segregation at this university. The university started taking in black students from 1993, but it was a very small portion of, of students. I think they were less than 40. And um, placing them in residences, starting with black students being in their own res, Emily Hope House, which is now diverse, at that time was allocated for black students, both uh, male and female, but it was more of a senior residence. The advent of democracy ushered in a new year. Respected black academics were roped in. Retiring Prof. Mutlomi Muleleke was one of them. I had my own prejudice about this place. I thought that the place was downright African and uh, downright for Trump. And I would not be welcome here, so I didn't want to come at all. But he insisted, and eventually I did come down. And to my surprise, when I came, I realized that my fears were unfounded. In fact, I was welcome more than the people who had been here before. In fact, there was a fellow called uh, Dr. Kriche, I think Dr. Skip, Skip Kriche. He, he was very uh, jealous about uh, the way I caught attention more than they who had been here for quite some time. There was a need to transform higher learning institutions across the board. We had the Universities Act that was passed by the apartheid government that created all these different universities on the basis of race and ethnicity. Now, with the Higher Education Act, we wanted to come up with one policy that would see to it that there is overrolling of the education, uh, higher education system, such that everybody in the country benefited from that. The university, also known as COFSIS, is one of the institutions that accelerated such a transformation. The Race 4 incident, which fueled racial tensions on campus, marked the turning point. The saga emanated from students resisting racial integration. When people who are different come together, there's bound to be conflict. And, and, and if you don't value what they bring, and if you don't value each person and, and make an environment in such a way that everyone feels at home, we have this tendency of saying, um, treat people as, as you want to be treated. In July 2009, Prof. Jonathan Janssen was appointed as Vice Chancellor and Rector of the University. Faced with the daunting task of resolving racial tensions on campus, he went to work and today the university is a melting pot of diverse cultures. There's a diversity in here. There's whites, blacks, Indians, what you can name them. And uh, even the management itself, it, it, it is non-racist. So many uh, black people back then couldn't go to universities and study and to, um, to fulfill their dreams. So now I think there is a huge change because um, black students now can like graduate and go to their career fields, get their um, jobs and work. But there's a need, a greater need to support black academics, young academics and women academics. So, so transformation includes all these aspects. 
but my main point is that uh, having a black institution merging with a striving white institution does not necessarily guarantee transformation. Uh, 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 there's a greater need to enforce transformation. While much has been achieved in higher education post-1994, increasing access to and funding for students from previously disadvantaged backgrounds remains a challenge. Zimasa Mbeu, SABC News, Bloemfontein. Well, that's exactly what the show is about, celebrating our 20 years of democracy. And as we've been asking you to do, we've invited you at home to participate in our special pre-election program by emailing us your views, elections at sabc.co.za. You can also send an SMS if you wish to do so. 33726 is the number you send it to. And remember to begin your SMS with the word vote, and every SMS will cost you 150. For tweets, if you are social media savvy, hashtag SABC elections. You can also find us on Facebook at SABC News Online. Your views will be shared during the show, of course, with our guests if we have some. If not, we'll also just read them out for you to see that we do take you seriously. Now, the brand-new University of Mpumalanga in Nelspruit is well prepared to provide quality education. Management of the university attributes this to a good working relationship with well-established universities. Among the universities providing assistance are the universities of Johannesburg and Pretoria. The University of Mpumalang is one of two universities established in the country since 1994. Mpumalanga is a mainly rural province. With a population of over 3 million, it has been without a fully-fledged university. This year, however, the government officially opened the first one in the province. The university currently offers only three programs. They are a bachelor's degree of education in foundation-phase teaching, bachelor of agriculture, and diploma in hospitality management. Uh, ever since when we commenced our studies, uh, everything is running smoothly. Uh, we are having access to books, meals and accommodation, but so far I can't complain. We've been waiting for this opportunity for a long time now. I think everyone is super excited about the university. I mean, like, it's in our homeland where we live. Basically, everything that we want is here now. We don't have to go far. Over 140 students have enrolled for the first academic year. The university intends increasing the first year intake each year. The other challenge is to try and attract academic staff. Academic staff settled very well in the big cities, in the big well-established universities, to come out to the low felt of Mpumalanga to start up a new program with all its challenges. That is also a challenge for us. But we have got some people that have really risen to the occasion. They've accepted the, uh, the, 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 the fact of coming to be the pioneers of the new university. The newly established university has partnered with other reputable institutions to ensure its smooth operation. We do have a, a, a relationship with Patron University. University of Pretoria is one of our partners. And then we have uh, University of KwaZulu-Natal. It's uh, one of our uh, uh, patron universities. Those universities have got um, really a, a, an oversight. We actually ask them to come and have a look at our program so that we are uh, complying with the best practice and uh, our programs are really on par with the best universities in the country. The university is currently undergoing a facelift to accommodate more students. All the buildings and infrastructure are expected to be completed by 2018. Moeli Maslela, SAPC News, in Narsprate. Well, your tweets have been coming in thick and fast as we've been asking you to share your views with us. Let's take a quick look at some of those that have come through so far from you guys at home. we we'll return to our video wall. In fact, in education is improved, in fact, has improved and benefits black people despite a huge unemployment rate amongst black Africans. Room for improvement, hashtag SABC elections, as we've been asking. The other one coming from Melvin, he says, I'm 18 years old, it's my first year to vote, and it's my first year to raise my voice at SABC elections. Another youngster, one of those who probably back in those times were not young enough to see 
well, what democracy has given him. But anyway, we appreciate your views. Do keep on sending them right now. And hashtag SABC Elections, as we've asked you to do. We take a quick break. Don't go away. When we come back, we speak to a rector from one of our universities. He tells us exactly what change has been brought as far as uh, tertiary institutions the country is concerned. Stay tuned. Democracy, Democracy 20, rather, continues after this break. Life has to be ordinary. Who says a beer can't be flavored? Yeah, baby. Add some flavor with new Flying Fish Premium Flavored Beer. Pure beer refreshment combined with the fresh taste of pressed lemon or crushed orange. Go on, add some flavor. Who are we, you ask? This is who we are. We are technologically driven. We are unashamedly Afrocentric. We advise you not only on legal matters, but on health issues as well. We bring imagination to life. We celebrate arts and culture and lifestyle. We tackle life challenges head on. We dig deep. We probe. We question. We invite you to take a view from our house. As we tell it without fear, separating fiction from factual. We are the SABC News Channel. All news, all global, all the time. If you've just joined us, thank you very much. You're watching our pre special pre-election show, which is called Democracy 20. And we now welcome to studio Professor Dan Khwadi from the Northwest University. Professor, thank you very much for joining us. You, the, 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 the show tonight is about celebrating 20 years of democracy, in particular tertiary institutions, the Northwest University. That's where you are based. Interesting. That's right. I'm based at the Northwest University. Tell us a bit more. Uh, I see you, you it, it's a daunting task in as far as you being appointed rector of three Northwest University campuses, actually. That's correct. I'm now the vice chancellor designate. I'll be starting next month as the vice chancellor of the Northwest University. Hmm. Now, the Poch, um, is it the Pochestrom campus, which is mainly a white uh, campus, uh, as far as we know, the NVRU, uh, is it? Northwest Pika, uh, if, if you follow them correctly. Mm -hmm. It's a mainly predominantly white, um, if I can put it, uh, white campus or white student-based campus. What are the differences? What have you picked up over the years, especially being a black professor in these institutions? We heard from, from the students saying things have changed. They now feel welcome in these institutions. As a faculty member, what is it like? Yes, indeed. There's quite a lot of change that uh, happened in tertiary education. You know, through the measures of universities, uh, some of the universities were born, like the Northwest University being a measure of a previously historically black university which was the, the University of the Northwest, and then a, pre, a previously white, historically white university, the University of Pochestrom, mm -hmm. merging to, to, to form the new university. There's quite a lot in terms of access that mm -hmm. has now been uh, promoted. You know, now you can have quite a lot of students, black students, going to the Pochestrom campus, and also the Mafigan campus has opened its doors, and a number of white students now have started now going to the Mafigan campus. Hmm. Now, an institution like the University of Johannesburg, previously known as, as, as Rao, as we have known it, has lost most of all its, or most if not all, its mostly Afrikaans-based speaking students. Efforts to win them back have been unsuccessful a bit. Are you wary of similar, you know, situations in, in, in developing in, in your campus, in Pochestrom, for example? Well, what's happening is we got to broaden access and open all our gates and our doors to different races. We are quite aware that in terms of the mission of the country, there's no university that can afford to become a racial or an ethnic enclave. 
So diversity is embraced by universities and the Northwest University has particularly uh, embraced diversity. And we are working on targets to see how we can improve and increase on the diversity and improve the minorities in our campuses. In which case, for the Mafeking campus, you need to get more white students to access that campus and the project stream campus to have more black students accessing. Are you finding that maybe those students within the white community around that area are now moving to, to other institutions or is it a, a case of maybe you're not offering what they want? No, at the moment they are now starting. You know, historically there was a perception that Mafeking is for blacks mm. and Bosch was for whites. So we're still working on that perception and making people aware and our learners aware that these campuses are open to all races. Just, just another question, uh, Prof. W you look at the scenarios in as far as sometimes, you know, uh, mid-90s leading up to most recently and campuses, various campuses across the country. It's not only, you know, KZN or Cape Town. Uh, instability, so to speak, where there's a, a violence uh, from, from students. That, wh wh where does it fall? Is it a matter of the students saying, we can see that government can provide, therefore we want more? Or is it a case of, look, maybe, you know, we, we, we're not yes, used to this democracy we have. We know that we're not sure how to use it, so to speak. Yeah, I, I guess it, it's more to do with managing expectations. You know, at, at times, you know, with our democracy, there, there could have been a lot of expectations from students, perhaps more in line with free education type of vibes. And uh, also the limitations of resources, especially with financial resources that limits, you know, students' access to universities. But uh, we know that NSFAS, our national scheme, has grown quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And they have provided a number of, uh, you know, bursaries for students. There's been a great growth in that respect. And I can tell you for the Mafeking campus, because of that as well, a campus that was mostly known for instabilities, mm -hmm. it has been very stable ever since 2008. Because, you know, there's government coming in to assist the students from the historical mm -hmm. disadvantage and also the university management and the council of the universities put measures in place mm -hmm. to assist those uh, students that are poor and deserving. Professor, there's a tweet, uh, a student or somebody hopefully just tweeted us right now. They would like to pose some sort of a question for you. Let's check quickly what it says. Maybe we can read it out to you, Professor. Okay. If our director put it up on our wall. As you can see, there it says, um, the problem is within former black tertiaries, you find a lot of ethnic racism Black men, you're not on your own, so to speak. What do you read from that? That is from Tato Wamaleka. He says, well, within black institutions, there is a bit of instability. Maybe that's why there are those problems that we just discussed. Yes, I'm not quite sure what he means by ethnic racism. But uh, I would say we should not be having black universities or white universities. We should mm -hmm. have South African institutions that are not in terms of racial divide. Okay, let's take one more before we go to the last question of the evening, uh, Prof. This one coming from, uh, let's see, who is it coming from? It comes from Black Ken. I'd say there's d diversity when universities like Potterstrom accommodates everyone. Most of their courses are in Afrikaans, though. Is that maybe a problem that you, you, you're finding, or is it a case of, in due time, everything will be for everyone, so to speak? That one from Black Ken, Gabelo Komana. Good. I, I, the language issues are, are very sensitive issues. Because Afrikaans is a language that has its place in the constitution. And I think as a, as, a, as a country, this is the only language that we have that is at an academic level, that is a language of instruction. Mm -hmm. There is a lot for us to learn as a country in terms of this and as far as extending it to other languages. Prof However, for Poch instrument, for in terms of its access, all we need to look at is how do we promote access to the non african students. And at the moment, We've got a multi-translation multi yeah. services. Prof, Prof, we're going to have to wrap now, but I need to, uh, 10 seconds. Have we changed from 94 to where we are now? Has there been improvement in our tertiary education? A lot of progress, I can say. Professor Dan Ahwadi from the Northwest University, thank you very much for joining us right in Democracy 20. Unfortunately, time does run out when you're having fun, especially with these programs such as these. We'll take a quick break right here on Democracy 20. Don't go anywhere. When you come back, we carry on celebrating 20 years of our democracy. Stay tuned.
I'm looking at Philip Hawkins, he's looking dapper today. And then Sam Murray has got all the results, including that heartwarming try by the box. Spongilo Kumalo, Buso Koza, Ringo Madringozi and Kulichana are some of the musical acts that will headline this year's Live at the Market Theatre series of music concerts. Justice Minister Jeff Khadeva says government is not undermining the independence of public protector Tuli Maron Sela. The public protector has, in our view, unreasonably denied us the opportunity to properly engage the report. An airport resembles a war zone in the Philippines. In its wake, damage, debris, and death. Why did you guys decide to name the, the, the debut album Treasure? Treasure, oh, because of my late granny told me that I'm a stone, then I saw it like, okay, since I'm a stone, this is a treasure. That's Morning Live, daily at 6 a.m. on SABC News. Get the latest news from the SABC's online news services on our website. Breaking news and in-depth coverage of everything from business, sports to politics and lifestyle. Catch the top news clips and watch live streaming of major news events on the SABC News YouTube channel whenever. Stay connected on the SABC News Facebook page and have your say on news that matters to you. And for the latest headlines and live updates from our reporters, follow us on Twitter. SABC Digital News, anytime, anywhere. Welcome back. You're still watching Democracy 20. In this program series, we celebrate 20 years of democracy. However, the forging of a new South Africa has not been easy. On this day 15 years ago, the constitution of a folk start was announced in Pretoria and thousands of supporters converged on Church Square to state their claim. This report rather, was aired on SABC News on the 26th of March, 1999. Church Square was packed to the brim. They came to lay claim to their folk start, which was unveiled in public for the first time. The envisaged area includes most of the Transvaal and Orange Free State, as well as Northern Natal. Part of the Northern Cape might also be included. Folkstrand leader Dr. Fadi Hattenberg emphasized that nothing will stop the Afrikaner from obtaining their folk start. <laughs> Met niks minder as ons volwaardige vrijheid en selfbeskikking sal ons tevrede wees nie. En as ons nie geaccommodeer word en ons word gedoen, dan sal dit nie ons wees wat verantwoordelik is vir die chaos wat kom. Dan sal dit ris op die hoogte van die mense wat het op ons afdoen nie. A declaration of intent was stuck to the doors of the historical O Raadsaal which faces Church Square. Two marches took place today one from the Union buildings in the east and another from the showgrounds in the west. More than 4,000 khaki-clad members of the so-called Forks Army followed a motorcade of banners and flags along Church Street to join their compatriots. They were led by Freedom Front leader Constant Fillion driving his own car. After returning a salute with Dr. Hattenberg, Halfway down the street, General Fillion turned back to attend to other appointments for the day. Members of the AWB kept a low profile after being asked not to join the proceedings in uniform. At Church Square, the new South African flag was set alight. A poster of State President F.W. de Klerk suffered a similar fate. While folk starters voiced their support for Pretoria as their capital, people elsewhere had mixed feelings. I would appreciate if everybody just got on with their lives and stopped fiddling around with things like this. It's very much difficult for them to get this Pretoria's folk star. Will you allow it? No, I won't allow that. Well, this is a new South Africa. We like to see everybody living together and in oneness and happiness. Denk jy is genoeg steun vir so'n hoofdstad? Ek geloo so. Uh, I can assure you that the majority of uh, the residents 
in Pretoria. That's about 800,000 people on, uh, do not associate themselves with this action today. Earlier, a number of women in white gathered on the square to symbolically claim Pretoria as capital of their false start. A long way indeed. But before you go, let's take a look at a few more of your tweets that you sent through. This one coming from Donovan Davis saying, Why should students be selected by color? Why not merit? Why not solve the deeper problem starting at school? level sabc elections that's our hashtag that's where you can find us let's move on to another tweet this one coming from i'm not quite sure but it reads i didn't like what happened in university of free state because well to show that whites are still racist and they don't accept that blacks are governing this country that was quite a while back coming from unati jive this one from ulani Gwigaz is saying well nfsas has helped a lot of previously disadvantaged students hashtag sabc elections we now go to our Facebook page and let's take a quick look at what other students or rather other people have been posting on our Facebook page. Do we still have time for that? According to my director, no, unfortunately we don't have any more time for our Facebook page, but do keep on sending them right here to elections at sabc.co.za. That's our email address or hashtag SABC elections is where you can send us those comments on Facebook and on Twitter. We'll try and put them on the show as you're seeing tonight. And with that, we end tonight's show. Join us again tomorrow evening at 6.30 as we explore the past 20 years of democracy. Stay tuned for the 7 o'clock English news brought to you by Peter Nora as well as Vakbashni Chetty and of course Simon Burke. Stay tuned. on SABC. We bring you news in your own language. News that affect you. Sports. We have Catherine Drew, SABC News at the High Court in London. Sherwin Bryce's SABC News News. Sarah Kimani, SABC News, Nairobi. We touch and change people's lives. SABC News, Africa's news leader. That's Sports Live, daily at 8.30 p.m. on SABC News. SABC News. We report, contextualize, and present news and current affairs honestly, fairly, and fully. We consider it a duty to provide consistent, relevant, useful, and top-quality information and analysis. Our mission is to provide credible, accurate, and interesting news programming, bringing news into everyone's homes in everyone's languages. Thank you, South Africa, for relying on SABC News for quality news output and for making us your number one source of information. SABC News, Africa's news leader. Zoom into Africa. This is South Africa. The president is Mr. Jacob Zuma. South Africa got independent on 27 April 1994. The population is more than 50 million people. One of South Africa's major languages spoken is English. The monetary unit is in rands. Why watch the news on SABC? We bring you news in your own language. News that affect you. Sports. Catherine Drew, SABC News at the High Court in London.